Coach, you want to start us off with an opening statement? Okay. Well, we're definitely excited to get back home and, and play in front of our fans. Uh, I think uh, our team understands what's in store uh, for us this week. Uh, be a very tough uh, football game against a very good opponent that uh, every year presents numerous numerous challenges. Uh, they're very well coached, outstanding on defense. They are every year. They make you earn everything you get. Uh, they force you into making mistakes, take advantage of that. Um, this past week, their offense played as good as they played all year long. It was very efficient, uh, put up good numbers, uh, moved the ball, got points. And I think if you look at their schedule, they played a very difficult schedule. Uh, two losses to two of the top four teams in the country, in Ohio State, Michigan, which no one has come close to beating. And then they had a loss by three uh, to Illinois, and another loss to the rival by three points. So we're going to have to play efficient football. We know that in all three segments. We're going to have to play uh, you know, as well as we have all year in order to get a win. And our guys need to understand that, and uh, that's how you're going to have to play in order to win uh, in our conference against the opponents uh, that we have coming up, uh, starting with Iowa. So, uh, you know, you'd have a good week of practice and uh, get out there and cut it loose come game day. How do, you, how do you judge whether your off week was productive or not? Well, I think that, uh, you know, we do have some guys banged up, so you're hopeful that they get out there and they're able to play uh, and get back to at least practicing some. Um, and you know, do your best job of that. Um, I think when you have an off week uh, and you've lost, it uh, stings more, and you've got to use that as fuel to get you back uh, to understanding what it's going to take to win. And hopefully, our players understand that uh, we have to play uh, more efficient football in order to win the win the game. As you begin this week, what what is the state of your secondary from a health standpoint and you know depth standpoint as you get into this week? Well, those concerns. Um, some guys still haven't practiced, so when they practice, we'll know if they'll be able to play. In the meantime, others have to get ready um, and, and be ready to go. So we've uh, definitely had to uh, um, maneuver some things and uh, try some different uh, possibilities in order to be prepared come game day. It, so is Jamari and uh, Corey still out? They have not practiced yet. Okay. What about Jenkins? Uh, we're hopeful he'll be able to play uh, just because we know uh, his background. He's played injured quite a bit, um, but that'll be a game time decision. As, as you've gone back and dissected what's happened to the secondary these last couple games, what where, where are the issues uh, with them and just the number of big plays that they've allowed? Well, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, I know we can play better. Um, you know, there are times that uh, the underneath coverage should be helping a little bit more than it has. Uh, there are times that we've allowed people to run by us, uh, which should not happen. Um, there are times where maybe we, uh, you know, can um, possibly press on the outside to give our guys a chance to disrupt the timing and not give up easy completions. There's been times uh, our front has allowed uh, the quarterback to get on the edge, whether it's a design rollout to the field or a bootleg where there's way too much time to throw. So yes, we've analyzed it all. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can put a, a good plan together and go out there and execute. Uh, you know, I think that uh, you know, trying to get these guys back healthy and, and playing efficient football is important. In order for us to win, um, you know, all three segments have to play really good football. We're not going to win, and uh, that's just. Um, you know, how it's going to work. So we, we need uh, the offense to, to take care of the ball and not turn it over and be as efficient as it can. We need the defense to create stops and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, do the best job they can to uh, keep teams out of the end zone and not allow uh, easy touchdowns. And special teams has to get an advantage. And that's just uh, one of the reasons we were able to win last year uh, is that uh, I thought all three segments uh, played together. Uh, and played off each other, and in the end, really just played better overall in order to give us a, just a slight chance to win. Probably see this more and more with the transfer portal, with Charlie and Ty, you know Tyrone coming from Iowa. Uh, so you're going to get guys playing former teammates uh, as we get through this thing. But is, do you have a message to them this week, or you talk to them about this? 
the emotions of facing their former teammates or anything like that, or do you even not address it? You know, I think it's probably less of a big deal than you think. I think, like you said, it's going to become even more common uh, every year. Uh, it just happens that, uh, you know, Tyrone's from Indianapolis, and, you know, this is where he's at now. And uh, he's worked really hard and uh, gives us great effort. Uh, Charlie, um, you know, we're fortunate to have him. He's been a really good player. Had a relationship with uh, Aiden O'Connell, uh, to be quite honest with you. And, uh you know, he's played really well now getting him healthy and uh, that's, that's a different story but uh, he's done a really good job and I just think every year you're gonna see players move and, and try to get the best opportunity for them uh, that's the nature of college football now you have to um, you know take care of your players as much as they you can but at the same time if there's a better opportunity somewhere else that they need to go to then they, then they need to go and uh, so you know, you want guys that uh, want to be somewhere and want to make a difference and uh, want an opportunity to showcase their skills. So we, of course, will try to do that the best we can. I think both young men uh, really represent themselves well. Uh, they're high character uh, young men that uh, want to make a difference, and I think they'll play extremely hard this game. How much did, has the week off helped Charlie? When he, I, I, I don't know if he did anything Sunday or not, but just you feel like it, it, it paid off for him? Well, I hope so. He hasn't practiced yet, so we'll, we'll see uh, you know, where, where he's at this week. But uh, you know, you use that time to, to hopefully get guys healed. But in the end, they know they have to get out there and practice in order to play well. What was different about Iowa's offense last week when you start looking at some of their you know, other games leading up to, up to when they played Northwestern? Well, when you watched them this past week, they were efficient. Uh, they didn't turn the ball over. Uh, they utilized their zone running scheme very well with the jet sweeps and the uh, nakeds and play actions off of it. They were able to get easy completions and get the ball out on time. Uh, and I just think, uh, you know, combination of those things, they played efficient football. So uh, that's a credit to them. And uh, I think they know that they've always had a great defense. They've always been really good on special teams. Uh, when their offense is clicking, uh, you know, you're going to have a hard time winning. So I, I do think it's important. Like, like a lot of games, we have to figure out a way to get a lead and to not allow them to be able to, um, you know, utilize that scheme as much as they can. Uh, so that's going to be vital for us is uh, figuring out a way to get a lead. Yeah, Jeff, can you just kind of reflect, I'm out, I was thinking about this this morning, about the last time Iowa was here and where you were at, what that was like. Remember? Well, I assume you're uh, going to the COVID year. Yeah, um, yeah that was a unique time. Uh, no one in the stands, and uh, luckily we, we found a way to win. Um, but other than that, I, I don't think back on it a whole lot. I, I know that every year um, against Iowa, man, it's, it's, it's the preparation is more than important because, you know, they're, they're as good as anybody that forcing the other team to, to make mistakes and, uh, and take advantage of it. And uh, so, you mean, you have to prepare hard and you have to make sure that you cannot allow that to happen. You know, when we played them last year, they were getting turnovers right and left. They had huge wins. And one of the reasons we were in the game is we did not turn the ball over. And uh, that helped us get a lead. And then it took them out of their game. So, I mean, the, everything's very important against them. Uh, and you just have to play efficient football or you know, if, 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 if they're driving the car uh, and in control, you're going you're gonna to be going uphill. But what was it like being at home during the game? Well, I mean, I, that's never any fun. Uh, I try not to relive those moments. Um, you know, I was, you know, good enough to do what I needed to do, but there were COVID rules that you had to abide by, and I, I do abide by rules, I guess. Just, just personnel-wise, too, um, could this maybe – is there a glimmer of hope that we do maybe see T. Dents or Brock Thompson? I'd say there's a glimmer, but I, I, I haven't seen the glimmer yet. So I, I think, uh, you know, it is what it is this time of the year. I can sit here and talk about injuries. Uh, you know, you've got to get the guys ready that are able to play. And uh, you're going to have them every year, sometimes more than others. But it's our job to figure out a way to win. So, you know, Brock's doing everything he can. Uh, like we talked before, he's just had a lot of stuff going on, so you got to give him a lot of credit. Uh, he's working hard to get back, but, you know, this is a tough physical football game, and you got to make sure he's fully healthy. So I, I don't 
you know, I don't anticipate that happening, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, then T, you know, like we talked before, he had double sports hernia. He had to go back and get another procedure. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's just fighting through that stuff. What are two of the guys, I think Paul Perferi and Ben Furtney, I, I think both got sustained some type of an injury in Madison too. What's their prognosis? Yeah, Ben will be out, and uh, Paul should be uh, hopeful he'll play. And have you, have you had a chance just to even talk to the team, maybe what's at stake here in November? Uh, is this the possibility is that, that they're at their feet here? You know, really not. Uh, I, I think that uh, we, we can't concern ourselves with uh, anything at the end of the tunnel. Uh, that's when you get caught uh, looking down a road and, and don't uh, prepare as hard as you can. Um, you know, there's a reason we use the one game mantra. Uh, you know, fans and everyone else can, can talk about uh, all the other stuff. That's fine. We, we get it. We understand it. But, um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. It's, it's, it's hard to win. Uh, you've got to do a lot of things correctly. Um, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't matter who you play. Uh, we know with this opponent that, yeah, we've been able to win a few times. But, man, you've you, you got to play efficient football and, you, and you've got to really do all the small things correctly. So, uh, you know, the only thing on, on our mind is trying to, to win this game against Iowa. How often do you guys encounter Iowa on the recruiting trail? Well, Iowa does a good job recruiting. Uh, you know, they, they hammer the state of Indiana quite a bit. And, and really before I got here, they probably dominated the state. Uh, I think we've been able to do a little bit better job. Uh, but uh, they have a lot of connections um, and, uh, you know, done a good job. So, um, you know, our coaches will run into them some. I, I ran into them a few times. Um, you know, they've coached football a long time. I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, you know, they believe in discipline, hard-nosed football, running, winning uh, the old-fashioned way of tremendous defense, sound running game, being physical up front. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's football. Uh, so, you know, like other teams, uh, the recruiting battle always happens, and you just try to sell what you can do for the players and how you can help them and hope that uh, – you know, they see the same thing and they can be a part of it. Yeah, Coach, uh, obviously the past couple of weeks, uh, King DeRue's been banged up, but has seen the field. Uh, Dylan Downing as well has missed some time. Just how did they kind of benefit from the bye week and uh, kind of your team's ability to kind of build up some more depth uh, in the backfield? Well, we're hopeful to get uh, Dylan back this week. We'll see as this week progresses, but King is unlikely. Um, well, with King being unlikely, then does that just mean uh, Devin's going to be carrying the load? And I guess just the challenges of managing some of those guys when there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty with guys like King. Well, I mean that, that, that's that's the part of it this time of the year, and you're hopeful to get as many people back as you can. Uh, I think uh, Devin's done a really good job. Dylan has worked hard to get back. Uh, we're hopeful this week that uh, he can get there. He's put in a lot of time and effort. Uh, Tyrone Tracy is uh, you know, ready to go and work in the position, and you just. Uh, you know, you got to move guys around a little bit to make sure that uh, all your all your positions are covered with a little bit of depth. With the situation in the secondary being what it is, is there anybody you can move there or have moved there? Well, we've um, moved guys around in the secondary. Uh, so there are multiple other guys playing the corner position, at least to some capacity, uh, that are learning and making sure that uh, we have backup plans ready uh, or even starting plans ready. Uh, so that has been um, worked on last week and on Sunday. And, um, you know, at, at, at this point, you, 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 you just, just got to find a way to get it done. So, yes, we have uh, moved uh, some guys around to be able to, uh, to learn that position a little bit more and play it some in practice. But there isn't anybody from offense you can move over anything like that? No, you know, we've talked about it. And, uh, you know, there might be one guy uh, – that we still might consider, uh, but at the same time, you know, he hasn't been over there at all, and it's just, it's not as, it's not quite as easy as you think unless you just play with one or two coverages and say, hey, guard this guy. Uh, but that person did work a day or two in a spring at it, but it, uh, it's more than likely just going to be from uh, the people we have uh, in the secondary right now. And then the Ben Furtney role, that's been a relatively important one in short yardage offense. It's not like you have a ton of running backs, have a ton of tight ends. Does anybody slide into that role now? Well, I think that uh, there are certain plays that we could use. Um, Payne or Paul, both are up and available. 
there are certain plays that we wouldn't want to use him. Uh, right now, uh, Tristan Cox has, has moved into that role a little bit. Uh, so getting him up to speed on just less than a handful of plays in those situations is what we've worked on. So it, it uh, you know, that, that could easily happen in a game uh, with Tristan Cox. Thank you. Um, the Iowa defense has always kind of tried to win that turnover game, specifically focusing on that. Um, after the game against Wisconsin with O'Connell's three turnovers, what's the importance of limiting those and what does O'Connell sort of have to do in order to keep those down? Well, I think we're all we're disappointed in, in the uh, turnovers. Aiden was disappointed. You know, we've talked about it uh, even after, and uh, he's still angry about it. Uh, but, you know, it, it happens. Um, you, you learn from him and move on. Uh, and I think he understands the importance of, uh, you know, taking care of the football. And uh, it's one of the reasons towards the end of last year we were able to win quite a bit because his numbers were off the charts as far as not only percentage but touchdown to interception ratio. And it's part of the game. Uh, so you just got to make sure you know every every game presents new looks and challenges, and when the play is not open on time, you have to be able to adjust and find an outlet and occasionally run. And you know what? Maybe that means in practice we've got to make him adjust and find the outlet and run more than he would like. Uh, sometimes you can fall in a trap of guys being open a little more in practice and think that that's going to happen in the game like that. So we've normally been pretty good at adapting and adjusting to that, but uh, we'll do our best to help him prepare this week of uh, finding the outlet, the check down, and running occasionally uh, because that's how it's going to happen in the game. What have you seen from the Iowa defense that makes them well averse to um, that make them good at defending these op opposing pass defenses and getting these turnovers? Well, they're very sound. They're well, extremely well coached. Uh, Coach Parker's outstanding. He's been doing it a long time. He comes from a great background and, and tree of uh, defense. Up front, they get off blocks. They're physical, uh, but they definitely get off blocks faster than other teams. Um, their linebackers are in great position. Uh, they know how to play inside out, wall things off, put their hands on people, stay in their zone. They know how to play the quarterback's eyes and where he's going to go if he throws it early, where he's going to go if he throws it a little later. Uh, the secondary does a great job of keeping the ball in front of him, staying inside, uh, not giving up the big play. And I think when those three segments play together well, you got to earn your completions. you got to earn your yardage, and uh, they're not going to give you anything cheap. So with that, if you throw a ball near one of their guys, they catch it. I mean, it's, it's like it's noticeable. Uh, I don't know how they do it, but they, they catch everything that's thrown close to them. They don't drop interceptions. Uh, they take advantage of it. And uh, when you do that, they, they win football games. And like I said before, we played them last year. They were dominating teams because they were just crushing people in the turnover battle. And uh, it's, it's just something they're really good at. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.